Welcome back. My name is Pro, and today we are going to discuss Hi. the community's feedback and the changes Jagex has made to Forestry Part 2, based on our input. We're going to start off with leaf effects and teas. They decided to remove leaf effects and the ability to craft them into teas. These effects felt detached from the skill and added unnecessary complexity. Campfires are staying, providing a social experience. The bonfire effects from fire making will be kept, allowing you to add all logs with one click. The experience from campfires will be adjusted, ensuring they don't overshadow existing fire making methods. Next up, we have two handed axes. They are keeping two handed axes in their current form, acting as upgrades to regular axes. You will need the axe handle from the forestry shop to combine with your axe. The two-handed axes provide more experience for fewer logs, using run energy. Forester's rations can restore the energy per swing. Also, stamina pots will have no effect on the energy consumption. Sawmill vouchers. Sawmill vouchers will be introduced, giving you two planks for every log used at the sawmill. They are stackable, tradable, and won't be consumed unless you have space for the planks. They will not be used when casting the plank mix spell, and they are still discussing if they should be able to be used when making them in your POH. Now we move on to events, the Leprechaun Rework. The Leprechaun event will still retain its banking feature, but now there will be new rainbows spotting periodically around the Leprechaun, Running into these rainbows will grant you a buff that provides additional woodcutting experience and a chance to receive anima infused bark simply by cutting trees. The more rainbows you interact with, the longer the buff will last. The next event is the Friendly Int. This event is available for free to play players and will have a chance to occur whenever you chop trees. Six endlings will spot around you, each with a different hairstyle complaint. Your job is to give them a trim that meets their desired style. You'll have three options, their back, the side, and the top, resulting in different hairstyles for the baby trees. You'll receive woodcutting experience and anima-infused bark for each it that is satisfied with their trim. Additionally, you'll get an experience drop and more bark based on the time spent in the event, along with a random amount of leaves and a chance for the egg nest. Moving on to beehives, to initiate the beehive event, you will need to create a smoke canister made from smoke fuel, leather, and a steel bar. The beekeeper will spawn when a beehive drops from the tree. Your task is to help rehome the bees by building temporary bee homes. Using any type of log on the bee boxes, you will construct them, turning them into bee-friendly environments. During the event, you will gain woodcutting experience for each log added to the bee boxes. When you complete a bee box, you will receive a big experience drop, anima infused bark, and a chance to get a bee box part. These parts can be combined to create a bee box for your player own house. Alternatively, if you already have one or don't want one, you can trade the parts to the friendly forester for anima infused bark. And next we have the pheasant control. To start the pheasant control event, you will need a pheasant spoon made from the egg cradle and limestone brick. Nest will spawn around the tree with one containing an unprotected pheasant nest with eggs. Your task is to locate the unprotected nest, remove the eggs, and then take them to the freaky forester. Pheasants will periodically switch nests to guard their eggs, so you will need to keep track of the correct nest. You'll gain woodcutting experience and anima infused bark for each egg handed over to the freaky forester, and at the end of the event, you will have a chance to earn pheasant feathers which can be traded in the Varrock Fancy Clothes Store for a pheasant outfit. Alternatively, you can trade these feathers for anima infused bark. Up next, we have Poachers. The Poachers event will allow you to get a fox whistle, which unlocks the ability to transmog your beaver pet into a cute little fox. To start the event, you will need to create a trap disarming kit made from disarming kit blueprint, bronze wire, and an iron bar when chopping trees. A fox will appear and start wandering around the trees while poachers place their traps to injure the fox. Your task is to disarm these traps. Once the first player clicks on a trap, others will have a short period to contribute by disarming the trap as well. If a fox walks into your trap, it will lose some HP and eventually limp off. 
For each trap you help disarm, you'll receive woodcutting experience and anima infused bark. At the end of the event, you will get a big experience drop and bark based on your contribution. You'll also have a chance to get a fox whistle with this event, which allows you to transmog your beaver into the fox, or you can sell it for anima infused bark. Now we have the enchantment ritual. The enchantment ritual event calls for you to aid a dryad in completing a ritual that keeps the forest of Gelinor safe and the trees consistently spawning. To start the event, you will need to create a petal garland made from crystal charm, flowers, and a ball of wool. Different ritual spots of various colors and shapes will spawn around the tree. You need to stand on the ritual spot that corresponds to the shape and color of your dryad needs. There could be multiple spots at once, so be attentive. You have a completion bar that needs to be filled to complete the event, and you will receive woodcutting experience and anima infused bark based on your contribution once the ritual is complete. After the event, you will have a chance to receive a wearable version of the petal garland, which you can keep or sell for bark. Regarding the drop rates of unique items from the events, such as the fox whistle and the golden pheasant egg, the developers are aware of the concerns players have raised. While they can't disclose the exact drop rates just yet, they want to assure players that the design of receiving a random item from a random event inherently increases the odds of obtaining one. Additionally, players need to have the beaver pet to even use these items, further influencing the chances of obtaining them. The team is committed to ensure that these unique items have a suitable drop rate for all players. To address the concerns about the events being too far removed from the core woodcutting theme, the team has decided to include additional construction experience as a reward during the Beehive event. This change is intended to provide more coherence between the activities and the woodcutting skill, offering players more of a cohesive experience. The developers are mindful of the potential for bloating by adding new events, and they want to ensure that they only include events that resonate well with the players. While they are open to making adjustments and possibly removing events that don't fit well, they are eager to receive feedback from players about the beta testing. The goal is to encourage more players to engage with all the items available in the Forester Kit and to fine tune the content based on the player experience and preferences. Next up here we have Twitch's Gloves. Twitch's Gloves, formerly Aberus Gloves, will increase your chance of receiving specific bird's nest while woodcutting. Charges will be consumed each time you roll a chance for a nest. The current content changes. Woodcutters with 99 woodcutting can now get the effects of the woodcutting cape while wearing the forestry kit. The log basket will work more like a plank sack and the forestry kit can be stored in your player own house. Players have requested better access to the arctic pine trees, which are currently limited to those who have completed the Fermanic Isles quest. To address this, the developers plan to add arctic pine logs as a rare drop in the Winter Todd minigame. This change will make the logs accessible to all players without affecting the natural habitat of the trees. The addition of arctic pine logs to Winter Todd will be implemented as an unpolled change, similar to the Chaos Elemental drop table change from poll 80. Next up we have the timeline. First we're going to have the news post and feedback changes, and then on the same day, on August 3rd, we have Discord stages call. And then on August 4th to the 18th, we have the Forestry Part 2 poll. In early September, we will have the Forestry Part 2 beta news post. And then in early September, we will have the Forestry Part 2 beta. And that's about it for Forestry Part 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Pro. Remember to like and subscribe.